Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay. Uh, Dallas City Council bans short-term rentals from single-family areas. They just said, you know what? No more short-term rentals. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk. We're going to go through the article. Talk about things in the article. Um, this is sort of a trend that's that's started recently. It is a trend, and so here's the thing. Um, how many of you out there have participated in the Airbnb economy, meaning either as a guest of an Airbnb, you know, at an Airbnb, or as a host at an Airbnb? Uh, we have been guests of Airbnbs all over the world, and Airbnbs offer um, an opportunity for people to travel, and they offer unique experiences. And above all, the thing that I think makes Airbnbs most attractive is they are family friendly. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, we went to New York City with four children uh, that three. were three, three, three. Okay. With three teenagers. children, with three, three, um, three teenagers, so we needed space. We needed separate bedrooms for these people. These were not small people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my son was six foot tall. Okay, not exactly somebody that was going to share a bed with somebody. Okay. Uh, so th these were big people, and so we rented an Airbnb in New York City. Uh, we stayed in Hell's Kitchen. It was great. Uh, again, we had you know five people. We had uh, we all had our own rooms. Um, we had we had a kitchen, which of course made made the whole trip much more affordable. Mm -hmm. So this is really important. Uh, we have friends who have four children. They've been with four children to Hawaii, to Costa Rica, to all kinds of places. And again, they need an Airbnb because they've got four kids. They need to be able to house them all under one roof, not separate hotel rooms. They need to be able to feed them in a you know in a kitchen, not have to buy food for six people out you know this is very expensive so airbnbs serve a very important role uh you know you can't go to an extended stay with four children okay right. that's not going to work uh, you need an airbnb you need a place that makes sense a lot of times these airbnbs have things like surfboards and bicycles and and um, beach chairs and things like that which make the make the whole vacation so much better for everybody they've got you know all these amenities that make the, the trip just amazing. Um, so this is I'm making the, the argument for Airbnb so that you understand who this is harming. That this is not harming you know some business person that owns the Airbnb. This is actually harming consumers. Okay, so there's two arguments that are always made. Mm -hmm. One argument is well, the reason home prices are high is because of all the investors who bought short-term rentals that owner occupants couldn't buy. Okay. Now, first of all, owner occupants could have bought them because when they were for sale, the seller accepted the offer of an owner occupant. So first of all, that's the first thing. Okay. Um, second thing is in Dallas, they, they have about a thousand that they're going to ban that are in residential areas. Okay. They have 484,000 single family residential homes in the Dallas area. The what? Okay, first of all, all thousand houses are not going to instantly get put on the market. Mm -hmm. Many of them are already second vacation homes, so they just won't sell them. They'll just probably go to monthly rentals. The other ones will probably either go to monthly rentals or go to um, some other thing, maybe a long term rental. Maybe a couple get sold, but this will this will have z zero effect. And there we have follow every time this happens in a market. There have been zero times. Zero, where banning short-term rentals caused homes to be more affordable. Home prices always continue to go up in those markets. Right. So the amount of inventory that would come to market, first of all, even if all 1,000 of them came to market in a market that has nearly half a million homes, that doesn't make a dent in it. And, and the second portion, you know, uh, to Todd's point, whatever number of them come on the market, they're not going to move the needle. They're not going to make any difference. So again, it kind of goes to my point as to who this is actually harming. Uh, it doesn't help as far as inventory, and it's actually harming consumers. The other argument is the party house. Hey, uh, you know, these are just party houses. You know, college students rent these houses out, and they just make noise, and they're up all night. 
We've rented over 100 Airbnbs all over the world. We've stayed all over the world in Airbnbs. We've never had a party in them. We follow all the rules because we don't want to get banned from the platform. You know, we've been able to stay in Zurich and, you know, Lake Como and places like this where you just can't maybe always find it, you know, maybe the hotels are full or you just don't want to be in the hotel part of the city. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll put up an article here from the, the that came out. It was in the thing, uh, quote from the article. Party houses are what makes the news, Sieber says. What doesn't make the news is how a friend of mine has a short-term rental that's next to a woman taking care of her elderly mother. The elderly mother's sister rented my friend's short-term rental so she could be right next door while her sister was dying. Right now, I've got a girl staying in one of my short-term rentals that's been here for a 10-week internship. She's on a budget, and she can't afford a hotel for 10 weeks. People don't hear those stories. And most of these rentals are not, like, there's almost zero chance they would, they would be a party house. Right. So the thing about a party house, I mean, does it happen? Of course it does. Uh, but the issue with that is that when somebody behaves badly in an Airbnb, uh, then the host gets to put up the, their review of the guest and future hosts are not going to accept that guest. So the, it's very uh, self-defeating to behave that way. And you, when you say, well, you know, they'll just create another profile. That could very well be. However, when you create a new profile, hosts are much more careful because you don't have any reviews. So th there have been times when people have been turned down uh, by Airbnb hosts because the guest or the um, prospective guest didn't have reviews or had negative reviews. So this is an important point. Uh, the platform is actually pretty good about policing itself against party houses or against party guests. So uh, the, the system really does work. We have had really good experiences with Airbnbs. Um, we certainly have never partied or anything like that, and we would never disrespect someone's property or their neighbors. Here's the bottom line. Someone can buy your house, the house next door to you or behind you, move into it, and then decide to open a basketball camp in their backyard and have kids over you know, six days a week up until 10 o'clock at night with lights, playing basketball, kids screaming. And there's they don't have to be a short-term rental to do that. They can rent a house and do that. They can own the house and do it. They're there every day. Maybe, you know, I lived in a house one time that was in a super nice um, luxury home neighborhood. And the people behind us had teenage kids. And every Saturday night was party night. And their friends would all come over and they'd be hooting and hollering in the backyard, screaming till 1 a.m. And there's nothing really. What can you do? So this whole it, this whole thing is just it doesn't really solve a problem by banning these things. Um, it, it causes more problems than it solves. And then imagine this for the final sort of thing, I guess. Let's say that it does. It lowers prices somehow, right? So imagine this: you look at your house and you go, "Oh, my house is worth five hundred thousand dollars. Well, this is really nice. I'm gonna I'm getting a job transfer in a few months. So when I get my job transfer, I'll sell my house and I'll move. And then you and then you go, you know what, we need to ban the short-term rentals. So you go ban the short-term rentals. And then they all flood the market. And all of a sudden you go to sell you you get your job transfer, you go to sell your house, and the agent comes over and goes, Yeah, your house is worth four fifty. They go, No, 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 it's worth five hundred thousand. Well not anymore because all these houses just came on the market and they just pushed home prices down. So you Mr. Seller, your home's now worth less because you're trying to sell it while these all these other homes are on the market, you have to compete with them. And you're like, what the So right, so that's the whole thing. It's it this doesn't really, it doesn't, and it doesn't actually do that. This happened in Santa Barbara and they banned short term rentals and like there was zero effect. Like home prices kept going up. It didn't. No, but none of the people sold the houses. Like nobody sold the houses. They were people living in the house because we stayed in one in Santa Barbara. It was funny because we'd stay there and then like a few months later, the city council went to ban them. We were in the house with the owners. They were just retired and they had like a bedroom, bathroom down the hallway that they would rent out. And we wanted to spend like a week there. So we stayed in the people's house. They're not going to sell the house now. They're just not getting this extra money. Mm -hmm. right. And we came there and contributed like to the economy. And we, you know, bought food and stuff like that. And we wouldn't have stayed in a hotel because the hotels are stupid expensive. Right. And then the other thing is 
Uh, you know, a lot of times with these short-term rentals, like Todd said, they're not necessarily renting out the whole house. Maybe they're renting out a portion of the house, maybe like a granny flat or something like that. And that helps people on a fixed income. It helps people improve their, the property. So there are other things that are going on. So again, I think that this causes more harm than good. And I know that for every, um, you know, 500 great Airbnb people, there is one dud out there. And you know what? But you're going to deal with that no matter what. And the difference is that that dud is going to go away versus that neighbor that bought the house next door and is not going away. So uh, you know, before you're all excited that, oh, they've banned the Airbnbs and, and the Airbnb next door to me is now going to be sold, that's great. But now you could end up with that neighbor that is... Um, you know, cooking food that doesn't smell good to you in the backyard every night and you can't enjoy your backyard or playing basketball until 10 o'clock at night, you know, six days a week or that, loud music or, or they had or, wood, woodworking in the backyard. Exactly. There's so, still saw going 24 hours a day. Yeah, yep. So, you know, it, you can't really control everything. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, my, my number one thing is that I just think it hurts consumers uh, like us who you know had kids and and it was very useful to us and we we have lots of friends with kids and and airbnbs are very useful to them so yeah. anyway this is our take on it uh let us know in the comments what you think please be nice to one another uh please share the video it's really important so we can grow the channel please subscribe hit the notification bell yay uh <laughs> share the video and like the video and we'll see you on the next video bye bye